Here's a fun animation I did recently of a VW camper van. And in this video, I go through the process of making this entire scene. It's got lots of tips and tricks, but if you wanted more detailed tutorials, then do check out my website and the playlists on this channel. Also, this video is sponsored by PC Specialist and Nvidia. So I start by making the outline of the camper van with a basic cube, adding a few loop cuts, putting them into position, using a mirror, fairly obvious stuff. I cut out the wheels using the knife tool, and I'm not worrying at all about topology at the moment. I go back and tidy it up later on. I find it's far better to just get the shape in first and then think about where you want the topology and flow to go. I try and keep the polygon count really low. The more polygons you add and the more loop cuts, the more editing you have to do. So it's really important to keep it as low poly as possible for as long as possible. This is what I would call a very traditional box modeling approach as opposed to more modern hard surface techniques where lots of booleans and things like that are used. So you can see for the wheels that they've got a really low poly count of 12 verts. It all looks very blocky at the moment, but when the subdivision surface modifier is added, it all comes together. Now you can see I'm slowly adding a bit of curvature and I'm starting to go in now and split the shape up with the knife tool so I've got a quad based mesh. Again, I keep the wheels nice and simple. I use a mirror modifier so they're the same on either side and a basic subdivision surface modifier to kind of smooth them out and round them out. Then when I'm happy with the wheel shape, I can go back to my main model and start editing once again. There's still some end gons on the shape, but I jump into the subdivision surface modifier anyway. I'm leaving those there because I've still got to cut up the shape a fair bit. So I'll create more of a quad base mesh when I've decided exactly where I want my topology. You can have end gons and triangles within shapes. The subdivision surface modifier will work better with quads. It will be more predictable. But again, I'm trying to keep it really simple. And you can see this cut that I've made in here. I'm thinking about the topology flow and how it's going to work. So I just go in with the knife tool, make the cut, and then think about how I want the topology to work around it. For me, that's the best way to work when creating any shape is just to think about the topology flow. So where are those obvious lines that you want the direction of the polygons to go? Then you cut those in and work around those. And you can see I've got a rough shape that I'm fairly happy with and I start going in and thinking about how I want the topology to work and trying to make it into quads. And because it's quite low poly, we can always go back in and change things if we want to. Lots of people when they're creating things like vehicles have loop cuts going all the way through from top to bottom but actually I find when working with things like vehicles it's much better to think of the panels as separate objects and try and get a edge flow that goes around the edge of the panel. The panels don't actually have to be separate but the edge flow needs to follow the panel. So you can see me going in and tidying up that front bit there and every now and again just tidying up the topology make sure it's in the right place. For example around the wheels here I'm making sure the curve is nice and flowing and if necessary add a loop cut in. The windows are very straightforward I take a few faces and inset them. To make them a bit sharper I use supporting loops but I often spread those supporting loops around a little bit when they're away from the window. If you're not sure about the term supporting loops then do take a look at my get good at blender series. That goes through a lot of these techniques that I'm talking about here but also it gives you examples and follow along exercises and challenges. Now you can probably start to see that my shape is looking a little bit more boxy than curvy and I do have to go in and keep editing it once I add a new loop cut to make sure it maintains that curvy shape. This whole process is probably a lot easier if you have some reference images that you're following precisely but because it's very stylized as an object there was no reference image as such I could have drawn one out but I felt like I wanted to just have some fun and go with the flow. That does tend to take a bit more time of course but it can be really fun and creative. Now for the door, you can see I've marked out an area or shape with the current topology that's already there. So I've got my edge flow ready and I'm moving vertices and edges into position for the outline of the door. I actually delete some of the edge loops around the place that are a bit distracting and add those in later on. Select that outline and then bevel it. I make sure it's got three edge loops, select the middle one and just pull that backwards slightly. So it's kind of inside the shape. That creates this sort of outline of a door. Now in this case, it's not perfect because I stopped the bevel at the top here. I know that the top's going to be hidden under the sort of cap piece of the van, so I'm not too worried about it. But I do tidy it up a little bit, but you can see a tiny bit of pinching there where there's a triangle. But again, that's covered up by the cap piece. I do exactly the same for the trunk or the boot compartment and it seems to work fairly effectively. You can see some of the topology around the windows isn't great, so I go in and tidy that up. And often it's just a case of merging vertices and creating new edge flows. So I use the knife tool a lot and obviously the edge slide to merge vertices a lot. 
And at this point, now I'm fairly comfortable with the shape and doing a bit of tidying up, I can add back in some edge loops that I took away earlier. Now with the windows, I want a sharp line where they meet the chassis of the vehicle. So I find it's actually easier just to make them a separate object and then overlap the chassis slightly. It often makes it a lot easier to have different and separate objects, especially when they are separate objects in real life. The windows are separate from the chassis. I do see a lot of people trying to make everything as one object when there's really no point in doing that. The same goes for the lights here at the front. However, the chassis does actually extend outwards slightly and encompasses the light housing. So I do create a topology flow around that light and then make it stick out slightly. I use a torus as well for that sort of chrome surround and then just a flat plane for the actual headlight glass. Then I go back and do a little bit more tidying up. Then I notice I need a sharper edge down this funny sort of lump that's in the middle of the vehicle. And again, it's the same approach using a bevel command. That creates sharp lines because you have supporting edges. If you have good edge flow, then it's quite easy to create sharp lines because you can just bevel them. For relatively complex shapes like this logo here, I do have a tutorial about how you can make logos into 3D, but I always find the easiest way is to work on the shape as a 2D object first with a plane and then just extrude it out. I actually use a mirror, then I only need to edit one side if I want to make any edits that is. Then it's just a case of extruding the edges out so they meet each other in the middle. Now I do occasionally use the mean crease option with the subdivision surface modifier, that's supposed to sharpen edges up, but I do find it much easier with just this basic bevel. I find the mean crease is sometimes a little bit unpredictable, but that could just be my inexperience of using it. Now when creating more complex objects like these kind of air vents at the back here, you first need to create more topology. So I do that by insetting the faces. If I have to adapt the shape at all, I do try and edge slide rather than move them about. Otherwise you get dents in your shape. And then you can see I just extruded them out and then took the bottom face and just pulled that upwards with another extrusion. And you can see me doing a sort of similar thing with this door handle area. Just again, an inset, which is pulled inwards to create that area. And the indicators again, they're a separate object, but I do bend the chassis slightly to create that extrusion for the area encompassing the indicator bolt. For the bumper, the same technique of starting with a plane and then just extruding it out. It's got a mirror modifier, of course. I add a solidify modifier onto this as well to make it a bit easier. Then I'm only modifying one side. I also add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out and it's fairly straightforward from there. It does have these sort of sticky out bits so I just extrude a few faces and stick them out which seems to work just fine. Now because I'm not following any plans I do sometimes suddenly notice that things aren't quite right so this indicator bulb wasn't big enough so I had to go in and adjust the shape and it is quite awkward to do that. It gets more and more difficult the further you are in the modeling process because you've added more topology and therefore you have to edit more. And this time to make the glass part of it, I actually took an inside edge loop of the torus that I'd made and then filled that in with faces and kind of rounded it out. From here, you can see me tidying up the shape a little bit, sorting out the window at the back and copying the bumper from the front to the rear. When you get to this point, it's kind of fairly straightforward really because we've got the base model and it's got reasonably good topology. We can just start adding character elements and making it look really fun. And you can see me here adding some of the external parts like an exhaust pipe and wing mirrors and so forth. Obviously it's stylization means we exaggerate all those kind of things. And the process is very similar using box modeling techniques and just building it up slowly, then subdividing and adding a bit more detail. The other nice thing about this kind of technique of box modeling in this way is that most computers can handle this as long as the computer can comfortably handle Blender. When it comes to the scene as a whole, however, with all the particle systems and animations, you may find a less powerful computer will slow down a touch. Which brings us nicely to today's sponsor, NVIDIA and PC Specialist. As I'm sure you're aware, Blender's performance is greatly increased by NVIDIA RTX cards. This is me in the viewport, in cycles, with a very detailed scene, including particle systems for the grass and trees, and I'm getting almost instant feedback. PC Specialist are an NVIDIA Studio partner and leading system builders, selling a range of customizable PCs that perform amazingly with Blender. They specialize in custom PCs and laptops for creators and gamers. So configure your next NVIDIA RTX system using PC Specialist Online Configurator today. 
So back to the last part of our camper van, the pipes on the top with the surfboard rack. I used a single vertex and extruded it out, beveled a corner, turned it into a curve, gave it some volume, and then turned it back into a mesh. Sounds complicated, but it's actually surprisingly easy. I could do an extra tutorial on that if anybody's interested. Let me know in the comments below. But it's really effective for doing pipes. I then edited one side and copied it to the other and copied the whole pipe to the back. The surfboard's fairly straightforward. You can see what I'm up to here. Again, I get the shape first and then sort the topology out later with the knife tool. And you can see me getting a tiny bit confused with the knife tool. It used to be that you pressed E to create a new cut and now it's right click. I then use proportional editing to kind of pull up the front a bit so it's got a curve to it and obviously a subdivision surface modifier and so forth. For the fin at the back, I once again used a plane and then just modeled it and mirrored it much like the logo earlier and then just placed it on the top of my camper van. So for the landscape, I'm trying to keep everything as simple as possible. I do try out a few things as well. I was going to do it as a kind of diorama that's been cut out. So you should be able to see that in my initial experiments. To add the rocks, I enabled an add-on called Extra Mesh, and then you can create random rocks like this. I did change them a fair bit, but it was just easier having that starting point. Once I was happy with the setup, I then created six more just so I had some variation in the rocks and kind of edited them slightly and gave them a decimate modifier as well. It makes them look a bit more sort of blocky and low poly. Now for the trees, I've got a tutorial on that, so I'll link that in the description and put a card in the corner. But I create a single vertex and then extrude it out, add a skin modifier and a subdivision surface modifier, and that creates the branches like this. Then some simple primitives to go on top of that, usually subdivided cubes. Once you're happy with all that, then you can decimate it. I usually make a copy first, so if I want to create a different kind of tree, then I can easily go back to it. The decimate again gives it that nice low poly look. I create three different trees in total and then use a particle system to place them along the side of the road. Lots of people are using geometry nodes for this. I have experimented a bit, but for the sake of speed, it's just easier for me to stick with what I know for the moment. I moved the origins up into the trees slightly so that they dig into the ground and then just play with the numbers, the rotation and things like that until I was happy. For the water at the side, I actually took a plane once again and got the shape and then extruded it all the way across. Then I gave it lots of subdivisions to give it some sort of bank wobble. Then worked on the rocks, I added them to my particle system on the far bank, although you can't see many rocks there. Edited the shape slightly, put them into a collection, and I actually placed them on the near side because I wanted a little bit more control of the position. Now for the texturing, for the most part, especially when it came to the landscape, I used a gradient texture. It's kind of in between hand painting and just basic low poly textures. And the idea behind the gradient is that the object is darker at the bottom than it is at the top because of the light shining upon it. It's a common technique used in the early stages of hand painting before you do all the details. I also added an ambient occlusion though, but I don't really think that was necessary in the end. I'll be doing a video in the near future about this gradient technique, so watch out for that. I use the same technique on the rock, but I change it very slightly. I have a separate XYZ node and I use the normals for the texture coordinates instead of the generated. It creates a more sort of blocky look, which seemed more suitable for rocks. The vehicle was far more easy. I used basic textures and just split it up into different sections. Nothing complicated at all in this. It's probably worth mentioning that things like the tires and other really dark materials, I don't go all the way to black because I like to be able to play with the contrast of the final scene. And if you've already gone to black, then you don't have much room for manoeuvre. I decided to add some grass in. This was actually last minute, but I think it really works nicely. Just simple blocks that are being extended and grouped together like this. Then once again, put them into a particle system. I was just going to place them around into small areas, but then I decided it looked better as lots of it everywhere. And again, I gave it a gradient texture, dark at the bottom and lighter at the top. And I think that works nicely. For the animation, I think I really overcomplicated it. I was going to do a cutout diorama, so Boolean the whole thing. So rather than animating the vehicle, I animated the landscape going across. So the vehicle doesn't move. You can just see I've added really slight animations to the top. The wheels don't even rotate. They just have the illusion of movement. It seemed to work out quite well in the end, so I was quite pleased. And here I'm doing a test render of 25%. It's a good idea to do that and make sure everything works before your final render. 
Again, big thank you to NVIDIA because having a fast graphics card really speeds up this process immensely. So there we have it, the final scene with all its animation and fun going on. If you've got any questions about the process or want to see any videos in depth, then do let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.